This is my super duper awesome sprite movement project from part 14 and 15 of lesson 9 sprite movement, right? Um, CS Discoveries code.org. And it's great. I'm just going to walk through the code. I'm going to walk through how I built it. I'm going to brag about the joke it's based on. Do you want to know the joke? You want to know the joke. Um, what is a kangaroo's favorite music? Hip hop. Eh? So I think finding jokes is the best way to do these. All right. So the basics real fast is this is me setting up all the uh, sprites and controlling the scale. I obviously have a bunch, right? Each of these notes and my characters and the speaker. Now the draw loop. Draw loop is critical. That is where the counter pattern is doing most of its work. I do have a background as a fallback. Uh, the way you have a background like this is it's technically part of a sprite, right? It is stage one sprite. And just make sure it is at the top because the sprite that you declare, and I think it's the one that you set the animation first, is the one that will be drawn first when you do draw them. So anyways, here's the draw loop. 30 times a second the draw loop runs. So if you're wondering how it looks like they move, what happens here is, well, it goes through and grabs my speaker.y, which is the variable I created for my speaker. And it says, okay, speaker.y is going to be equal to the speaker's old y value, right? The property y of the speaker. So this property is going to be the speaker's old y value plus, and then it's going to generate a random number, negative 2 to 2, meaning negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2. And it adds that on. So a negative number is cool because that means you can add or subtract. So it doesn't look like it's going completely across this screen. Each time it runs, it does that, right? So each time it's moving the speaker a little bit forward and backward. But then, and the notes do that the same, except on the x-axis. For the animations, K is my kangaroo. H, and by H, I mean hippo is my hippo. Um, these, I'm grabbing their rotation properties. And I'm saying, okay, the new rotation property is going to be equal to the whatever rotation used to be plus three and then or plus two and each time the draw loop runs 30 times a second it adds a little to the rotation property so it moves like k my kangaroo over just a tiny bit and redraws it and then zoop, loops back around adds a little more redraws it and it's redrawing it 30 times a second so to our eyes it looks like movement but really, it's just redrawing these single images and moving these characters slightly. But anyways, this is my super awesome animation that I created. Um, I'm going to dive into step by step how I make it, walk you through it. If you're wondering where I got the sprites, that's actually going to be in the tutorial for part uh, 14 of this lesson 9. So you can look for that video. But this video, I'm going to walk you through all the animation stuff and me actually putting it together to look awesome like this and at the very end i do share it so you can take a look at it um try to build something really cool get your own ideas and all of that stuff of course don't plagiarize and plagiarize that's super serious but i don't even say that um yeah so check out how i made that made it if you make something cool make sure to share it below this is code.org i'm currently working on cs discoveries Unit 3, Animation and Games, Lesson 9, Sprite Movement, Part 15. And um, I have my scene started. I already hit play. All my sprites are stacked. If you don't have anything started, we start it in Part 14. If you were stuck on that, you should watch my video on that as well. Um, we're going to get some movement going on now, I believe. Yep, add movement to your animations. With your static scene set up, you can now add some movement. Woot woot. Um, when you are satisfied with your program, click the submit button to turn it in. You can always unsubmit and can you continue working if you want to add features, yes. But as a teacher, when you hit submit, um, at least on my account, I get kind of notified that you are done with that. So for my students, please be aware. Um, of course, it will be excellent, so we don't have to worry. Do this. In the draw loop, identify which sprite properties to change. Properties in code is gonna be dots. Right, so here it's just sprite properties, but we'll, have, we'll see a bunch of different types. But this is a property of our sprite animation, right? Sprite.scale controls the sprite scale. It's like a variable, right, named scale, except it's only to that sprite. So it's like a specific variable. We can set the sprite.x, and that's this 
specific X location of that sprite, not all of the locations of sprites. So that's why it's called a property. It's just specific to that sprite, to that one thing. But it's similar to a variable in a lot of ways. All right, update these properties using counter patterns. And that's where we add or subtract to cause some animations. Let's get going. So my scene is based on a great joke called, and by called, I mean, uh, is based on a great joke. What is a kangaroo's favorite type of music? Hip hop? Eh? Eh? So that is what we'll be doing. Okay, we're going to be making our music scene. We already got draw sprites. First thing I need to do is scale. Scale changes the size. And since I'm not going to be adjusting the size, I'm going to be I'm going to change the scale outside of our draw loop. The only thing that would need to go into the draw loop is if I wanted scale to change upon each new uh, time the draw loop ran. And remember, the draw loop runs 30 times a second. So you could think of it as running well constantly. Okay, let's set all these scale. And I actually, my scene, right, my stage, the background is fine. Um, K, R. K is my kangaroo. I'm going to set K at half. Hippo is my hippo. Also at half. And speaker is going to be set at 0 0.5. And remember, uh, this is out of 1. 1 is a 100%. So 0 0.5 is 50%. I name my notes note 1. I'm going to set everything to half at first, which is again 0 0.5. Okay, that's a bit more reasonable time to move stuff around. Hmm. Let's have... I'm going to show grid. So right down here is about 350 for Y. And... Uh, so this is 0y at the top, 400y at the bottom, 0x over here, 400y over x over here. So we'll set k up at, and then hippo's going to also be at 350 and maybe c. Oh. <laughs> we don't need our hippo this far up. Perfect. And then I need the speaker to go down. Oops. I want the speaker to be drawn behind them. Well, I can have it right. There. Let's just move over a minute. Mm. Decisions, decisions. Let's try that. Okay, great. And now I'm going to put my notes up and around. Let's put one over near the hippo. Probably don't want them in an exact row. Definitely not. I like that they're slightly transparent. Um, so we want them up more. That might not even be enough.
<laughs> and I think, all right, so I want to have the music, actually, I might want to drag scale. Or X, Y. We're going to have the X and Y location. Let's try having the X and Y location of our notes jump around some. So, to do that, we're using the counter pattern, okay? And I'm going to grab my sprite X, sprite X. I'm just going to have them go back and forth. And so my sprites are note one that I'm going to have jump around some, note two, and note three. And what I'm going to do is, well, we need to add to them, right? We're updating their properties. So the pr property I am updating is the X property of note one, two, and three right now. And I'm going to set it equal to whatever their X property was equal to. whatever their X property was equal to. Um, I don't want them to go all the way across right now. So I'm going to have it plus negative 2 to 2. So I might be adding or subtracting two, and that should make it appear like it's jumping around. Because it's random, it will kind of move a bit differently each time. Note 3x, let's see. Oops, and I did something wrong. Oops, I... There's no note in existence. There's a note one. <laughs> that I enjoy. Okay, and now the dancing. I'm going to also use rotation in the counter pattern. And I'm going to have my rotation... Oops, math. I'm going to need to add to it. This is going to be the dancing. Because they got to dance. their music going on. So, K, the kangaroo's going to dance. And Hippo, the hippo, is going to dance. And um, it's going to be equal to, well, what their rotation was before. K dot rotation, hippo dot rotation. And what I'm going to have them do is, let's see, each time it runs, it can move. I, I'm not sure, honestly. We're going to try three. That's going to be fast, though, I think. I'm not sure. Rah! Party! Dance, dance, dance! <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, I'm going to put this speaker behind them, so I want it to be set up first. Um, I'm going to pull all this up there just to keep it together. So I'm going to put it right under stage, and that should keep it behind them. I might want to slow them down as well. So I wonder what one looks like. I wonder what five looks like. All right, but first, let's have the speaker change as well. Here we are. I'm just going to have the speaker jump around a bit. So I'm going to add to it. And I'm going to have it go up and down instead of left and right. So the, unlike the music notes, we're going to add to Y. And I'm going to use a random number like I did for them with the counter pattern. And my random numbers, let's do two and negative 2 and positive 2. And speaker Y, yep, let's try. What? Party! So I'm going to slow down our hippo a bit. Let's have three and two and call it good. Ta-da! And so the counter pattern, keep in mind, is I'm going to switch to text mode to delete some of this stuff. So 
the counter pattern is this stuff. I mean, technically it's random too, right? So what it's doing is the draw loop runs 30 times a second. So every time it runs, it's running, it's looping through. It grabs the Y value of where our speaker's at. It adds randomly either negative two, one, negative one, zero, one, or two to the speaker's Y value, right? So it's gonna either make it go down or up, and then it assigns that to the speaker's Y. So note X, it says, okay, what's note X's current value? And it says, we're gonna randomly give it negative two to a two, and then add or subtract that from the old value, make that the new value. Then down here, we're not gonna use a random number, we're just slowly having um, our kangaroo and our hippo rotate around at different speeds. And if it's drawing 30 times a second, each time it's wiping out the old animation and drawing all of this on top of it. So you never even see the screen go blank, but each time really it's just drawing for a, well, 1 30th of a second, K in a new location, hippo in a new location, and it draws it so fast that our eyes perceive it as movement. So super cool. This is my animation. You should make one really awesome yourself. I am going to share mine, right? I'm going to hit share and let you take a look at it, let you take a look at code. One of the really cool things about coding is collaboration and building off other people's things. That being said, plagiarism exists in coding. It's really easy to find these videos. As a teacher, do not plagiarize. Do not plagiarize. But please take a look at mine. Please get some really awesome ideas and make sure to, uh, well, hit share and I'm going to copy this right now and publish your project as well. And then put it in the comments below. I would love to see the awesome stuff that you make. Um, all right. I'm going to hit submit and keep going.